Every workbench has a beginning. For mine, the most important tool is a multimeter. Now which one to use? There are hundreds, if not thousands, of new and used meters available, from a cheap generic automotive meter to a precision lab-grade instrument. So far, I have unboxed these meters, and all are in need of cleaning and repair. For years, I have had multiple analog and digital meters, all doing their own tasks, but I always had a portable meter. This was used for everyday jobs, measuring opens and shorts to voltages such as 12 and 24 volt power systems. I maintained and installed network, audio and video security, and telephone systems. In every case, I always had a trusted meter. In the service, I used a Simpson 260. When I worked for Sony, a Hewlett Packard. But for 30 years in the field, I relied on flukes. Rugged, reliable, and easy to use. In early 2000, I purchased a Fluke 117, a general purpose industrial use meter. It has a CAT3 rating with a maximum voltage of 600 volts, DC and AC. It can handle up to 10 amps and has an input resistance of 600 ohms. This allowed me to perform almost all my meter tasks. So I opened my old tool bag and brought out the first, and to me, the most useful and important piece of test equipment, my Fluke 117. This meter has been used and abused, dropped from roller coasters, man lifts, and moving vehicles, and above all, it needs a good cleaning. But before I do that, I need to know if it still works and how accurate it is. So the first thing I need to do is replace the 9 volt battery. Then I purchased an AD584 voltage module to have a standard for voltage and resistance. Setting the jumper to 2.5 volts, I read 2.4 99 volts. The AD584 from the factory was listed at 2.499 volts. Spot on. Now to check resistance. The 100K, 10K, 1K, and 100 ohms. They're all well within 1% tolerance. Now to remove 20 years of gunk. I grab my old toothbrush, a spray bottle of glass cleaner, some warm soap and water, and a little bit of degreaser. The rubber case was the worst. With some of the scuff marks that were on it, it seemed the only way I could get it off was with the degreaser and a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, this took me, oh, I don't know, four or five minutes to 
to really thoroughly wash and clean. But all in all, it came out pretty well. As I was doing the cleaning, my mind drifted back to when my youngest boy was three or four. I had taken him down to his grandfather's house, where his grandfather was working on an old lawnmower. They worked together for, oh, about an hour, when his grandfather looked at him and said, Clean tools, clean mind. Now, whatever that means, I don't know, but I've always remembered it. And that's been my philosophy with taking care of tools. The case was in remarkably good shape. All it needed was a little bit of love and tender care, some soap and water, and a sponge, and the thing looked like it was brand new. Putting the rubber case back on and the probes back in, I checked to make certain that it still operated. We now have our first piece of test equipment, a Fluke 117 multimeter. Let me know in the comments below what is your go-to meter. If you found this useful or entertaining, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.